Chancellor Peterson, President Naylor, distinguished members of the Platform Party, graduates of University College, family and friends. I can't tell you how overwhelmed Arthur and I were uh, when we were informed of the great honor that was to be bestowed on us today. We are most grateful and coming from my own alma mater makes it even more momentous and meaningful. When thinking about what I'd say to the graduates today, a friend of mine suggested that I relate the length of my comments to the dress code that was in, in force in 1960 when we graduated, when we made sure that our skirts were long enough to cover everything, but short enough to still be interesting. <laughs> in the next few minutes, I'll try to stick to these principles as I share with you some key points that, that I learned from my academic involvement. My first point, point is about the importance of continuing to learn. My experience at this fine institution spans 55 years, from my first year in 1956 as an undergrad in honor science at University College to my present association at the Center for Environment. But like many things in life, this journey has not followed a direct route. In fact, the theme of my continuing learning saga could well be entitled, The Road Less Traveled. When I graduated with my BA in food chemistry in 1960, I was awarded a fellowship to continue my studies in the US. But I was married at the time, so therefore did not accept the offer. In the following years, Arthur and I enjoyed uh, raising a family traveling extensively, and living in various cities, including Paris in France. As more time passed, however, I continued to feel that my education was, was incomplete. So in 1987, I decided to return to the U of T to take my master's degree in environmental studies. Now, coming back to the university after 25 years hiatus can be somewhat daunting. And here's where I learned my second point to recognize the humor in parts of my journey. On applying to pursue a master's degree, the geography de department would normally have required a letter of recommendation from my undergraduate advisors. But I suppose, suggested the department chair, that your professors are either all retired or more likely all expired by now. <laughs> and I didn't name the chair of the department who said that. Also at that time, Simcoe Hall rejected my student number for having too few digits. <laughs> I, it's all true. I, advi I advised them to look back 20, 25 years, and lo and behold, there I was. After defending my PhD dissertation in 1995, my advisor, Virginia McLaren, who, who hooded us today, um, Virginia and I went to the grad school offices to sign official documents. There I was handed the advisor's document and Virginia the student's one since I was visibly the more senior at the table. <clears throat> this was quickly corrected, but as you can see, not so quickly forgotten. So I suppose my second point is, if you fo follow this nonlinear road, remember not to take yourself too seriously and just sort of roll with the punches. When I returned to the world of academia in 1987, I had developed a great interest in the environment, a subject matter, by the way, for which there were no courses in 1960. It just didn't exist. Also, by 1987, I had absorbed some understanding of the business and financial worlds. Thus, I was able to bring together two areas of knowledge that I had gained since my graduation in 1960. Persevering through the challenges of continued learning has awarded me a number of opportunities. I was able to examine corporate, environmental, and carbon management, establish new courses, teach, and co-author two books, as Rodney said. Each of these stepping stones presented a challenge since I had not done any of them before, but the satisfaction I experienced on completion was well worth it. Thus, my next message is that one should accept meaningful challenges as they present themselves, because many challenges are accompanied by great opportunities. Or as Albert Einstein has so aptly put it, in the middle of a difficulty, 
lies an opportunity. I believe that higher learning is critical to, the, to Canada's future. It makes us as individuals and as a country more competitive and prosperous, not to mention more interesting. And it opens up the potential for original thinking. And we all need people and institutions that think differently. Take, for example, how we look at water as a resource. Historically, water has been perceived as a common good, collectively owned, and shared by all. However, today, we are witnessing an increased scarcity in water, creating environmental refugees in Africa, water diversion pros, uh, proposals in China and elsewhere, and all at the same time, businesses and the public sector are now becoming involved in the management of this resource, using strategic thinking about supply and demand and new technologies to improve the quality, access, and availability of clean water. And all of this in an attempt to assess water-related risks across different geographies and different sectors. So innovative thinking is essential, is essential in such a complex situation. So now I turn to our uh, today's accomplished graduates. You may not have all the answers today, but your experience here at the U of T has given you the tools to develop a vision, the, the ability to view a challenge as an opportunity, the capacity to think differently. All of these qualities are important as you venture out on paths that others might not take. If I can leave you with one last small consideration, it is to look at today as a stepping stone to further education. As you can see from my experience, you can do it all, but you don't have to do it all at once. So graduates, I congratulate you all, and I wish you well, whether you take the road more or less traveled. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.